When it comes to the world of SEO, on-page optimization is a huge part of it. It's basically where we're able to take that keyword that we found and then put that keyword on our website in the exact places that search engines are already looking for it. But when it comes to on-page optimization, there's there can be sometimes like a lot of things to juggle, a lot of things to remember and all of that. So in this video, I'm going to go through on-page optimization best practices. We're going to walk through an example and then hopefully it will make the process a lot simpler for you and your website. What's up, y'all? Welcome back to my channel. If you're new around here, I'm Mariah from MariahMagazine.com. And on this channel, I help simplify things like SEO, websites, tech, and I dive into tools and recommendations to help you grow your online business in a way that works for you. So in today's video, I'm going to jump into a screen share. We're going to walk through an example of how to optimize a blog post for a specific keyword. And then I also have a tool that I found that you can use to kind of double check your work and maybe even make your optimizations even better. All right, let's get into it. Okay, so the example that we're going to go through is for this blog post on my website right here, Business Clarity Coaching, How Does a Clarity Session Help You? So this blog post was published back in 2021 when I was considering becoming a business coach. And then long story short, it's just, it just wasn't for me. I ended up running back to SEO consulting and I just love SEO consulting and education so much. It's such a better fit for me. But during the time that I was considering business coaching, I was creating a couple blog posts to see if I could start ranking on page one for relevant keywords. And so for this blog post, the target keyword that I was trying to hit was business clarity coaching. And since optimizing this blog post for that keyword, I remember I ended up getting this blog post on page one for numerous keywords. And I was in position one for a pretty long time, at least over a year, maybe even two years without even doing anything else to the blog post. Those rankings happened pretty pretty quickly. It only took about a month for it to start climbing up in rankings. And so I wanted to go through kind of like what I did to optimize this blog post for this keyword. Okay, so the target keyword is business clarity coaching. So you can see right here, first and foremost, the target keyword is in the blog post title. And then most website platforms, I'm just inspecting this here, most website platforms put your blog post title in an H1 heading, and that's exactly what we want. Okay, so you want your target keyword in the blog post title, aka the H1 heading. And another best practice to keep in mind is that there should only be one H1 heading per post. So that means no other H1 headings happen throughout the rest of this post, only one, and it should be the blog post title. Okay, so then the next place that I made sure that I put the keyword was in the URL of the post itself. So you can see business-clarity coaching right up here, and you can see that words are separated by hyphens. That's important because the search box look for hyphens and they kind of read them like spaces. Okay, so that's the second place that I made sure that the target keyword was. And then if we just search and find on here, we can see how many times I use this keyword on the front end, like within the content itself. So you can see I repeated the keyword again within the first 100 words. And then you can see that I used it again in an H2 heading, using it pretty naturally throughout the content. And then if we keep scrolling, I'm not using this language again for quite a few paragraphs here. And so we can still scroll down a little bit, but you see that I have it again here in, I don't know if this is an H2 or an H3 heading. So this is in another H2 heading. And so if we scroll down, this is an H3 heading here, another H2 heading here, and then I'm repeating it within the content itself. So as you can see, I only used Business Clarity Coach eight times on this entire blog post and Business Clarity Coaching two times in this entire blog post. So when you're going to optimize a blog post for a keyword, you don't have to repeat it a trillion times. Now you do have to use it in specific spots, like I said, in the H1 heading, in the URL. Ideally, if you can repeat it within the first 100 words, if you can get it within a couple headings, not 
all of the headings because that's going to look really, really spammy. Don't do that. Just in a couple headings and then use it naturally throughout the page content. And what this does is it essentially gives the search engine bots more context and like a better idea of what the topic of this blog post is and the target keyword or the phrase that somebody would type into Google in order to find this blog post helpful because that's kind of the whole point. Like we can't get a blog post on page one because we want to, we have to consider that search engines are a business. They want to show their users the best solution to the problem. And so we have to create content that solves the problem. Like this blog post, it's not just like 300 to 500 words. It's, it's pretty in depth here. And it goes through different pockets of information on like how a business clarity session can help you and what business clarity coaching is if somebody was curious. And so I beefed up this content a little bit, but it was really, really all along, like with the perspective of giving the user enough content that's helpful. I didn't add just like fluffy random things in here. I really did think about the user and the user intent of why they would be searching this keyword to begin with. So that's what a lot of people get wrong when it comes to on-page optimization that kind of just throw the keyword in there, mention the keyword a bunch of times, and they don't really consider what would be helpful for the user. And that's usually why they don't get really good results, especially quickly. Okay, so just to go over things, the first place, H1 heading, next place is in the URL if possible. Number three is within the first 100 words on the page. Number four is in an H2 or H3 heading, maybe a couple, not all of them. And then number five would be in the image alt text, which I actually don't think that I have defined here. No, I don't. We can see that the image alt text is actually empty, okay? So if I was gonna go ahead and re-optimize this page, I would try to get the target keyword within the image alt text, but we have to keep in mind that like the image alt text is for accessibility first and foremost, but we can be intentional about the keyword. So for the alt text for this image, maybe I would do like more I am magazine business clarity coach sitting with phone in hand using laptop or something like that. So I got a version of the target keyword in the image alt text while still being honest of what the image is of. And so the other places that we have to get the target keyword are actually on the back end of the site. So I'm just gonna edit posts here. And then I am using WordPress for my website, but best practices for this stuff are the same regardless of your website platform. But because I'm using WordPress, I use the Yoast plugin for my site. And if we scroll down here, these are the other two places that you want to make sure that your target keyword is in. Number one, the SEO title, and number two, the meta description, okay? So these two pieces of metadata don't show up on the front end of the site, but these are the things that show up if somebody is looking at the all search results on Google and they're taking a look at like the blue links and stuff like that. So these are just other places that the search engines look to get an idea of like, what is the main idea of this page so that it can organize you and associate you with the target keyword that you're trying to hit. Because even if you put your target keyword right here, the search engines don't see this. They don't really care like what you think your key phrase is, marketers, business owners, we've kind of ruined that <laughs> Google and search engines no longer take our word for it. It's kind of like if you want to show up for a keyword, you have to prove it, which is why having honestly helpful content around the topic that aligns with the intent of the keyword is so important. So all of those on-page optimization best practices can kind of be a lot to remember and a lot to juggle. And so recently I've been messing around with SE ranking an SEO tool and I ended up finding their on page SEO checker tool. So I'm just going to click on this and kind of show you what I did here. So this allows you to put in a specific URL. So it could be for your homepage, a blog post or a services page. And basically you can click new audit up here. You can pop in the URL that you want this tool to run an audit on. You can select the search engine. You can select the country in which you are trying to rank. So I'm in the United States trying to rank in the United States. You can select a specific area or a region, and you can select if you want the tool to look at the top five, the top three, the top 10, all of that. 
And then this is where you put your primary keywords. So when I ran the audit for the business clarity coaching, I put business clarity coaching right in here. And then just naturally the secondary keywords would be synonyms or different ways to say business clarity coaching. So then I just pop those in here, gave the report a name and ran an audit. And so I'm going to show you what came back here. So if we click on this, so we can take a look at the on page SEO audit score that SEO ranking gave me. And so it basically analyzed this URL that I gave it based on the keywords that I told it to kind of like analyze it for. And it gave me an overall page quality score. And so I got a 97 out of 100. And that probably is why that blog post after I published it, it didn't take too long to get on page one and then even sit in position one for a while because I kind of hit and checked a whole bunch of different boxes here. But since then, this blog post is currently in range ranking number 18. So it's actually on page two of results teetering in between page two and page three. And I think that a big reason is because it was published in 2021. So at the time of this recording, it's 2025. This blog post is old. It's got to be updated. So when I ran this audit, I was kind of like, okay, let's pretend that I wanted to prioritize this blog post and show up for this keyword let's see what SE rankings tool tells me to do and maybe we can get it from page two back to page one. And so the tasks that it outlined were so helpful. And so basically, like I said, you can see the page quality score here. You can see SEO tasks to improve and then it pulls in the top competitors. So who's showing up on page one for that keyword that I wanna show up for. And then this is just the breakdown of what it found. And so you can see the green check marks happening on all of the things that I'm doing right. But then we can come over here to errors and it says that the content uniqueness score is below the recommended level. So if I wanted to give this blog post a chance to rank back on page one, I'm probably gonna have to add some unique and helpful content to it. That's gonna be a top priority and then we can check out the warnings. So I might want to take a look at my heading structure, make sure that they're breaking down the content in a way that actually makes sense from a content hierarchy perspective. And then I want to make sure that the internal links actually it makes sense and I'm not redirecting users around to all of these different pages. And then we have some notices. So these are things to obviously take note of that we might want to go ahead and improve. And so it breaks down all of these options too. So all of this is really helpful. If we click view all tasks to what SE ranking does is it basically breaks it down into the high, medium and low priority and then turns it into a checklist. So then we can see up here the task status, things to still do and things that I've already done. But if you're you're looking at these and you're just like, nah, I don't want to mess around with the heading hierarchy, you can ignore the task and then it will remove it completely so that you don't have like random things showing up on your task list that you don't actually have to do. And then if you're just like, I don't even know what this means, you can click show details and it actually breaks down how it got this information. So this on page SEO checker is so helpful. I wish that it was a thing when I first got into SEO because it just breaks breaks down the best practices for on-page optimization so much easier. And so if you also wanted to kind of compare your blog post or your website to the competitors and the people already showing up on page one, you can head over here to a competitive comparison and you can see the on-page metrics, which I think are pretty helpful. So you can compare different aspects and parameters from your blog post or your website to the number one position. And if we scroll over here, we can see that it's also comparing it from the website that's in the second position. But if you wanted to add more, you can go ahead and add more to the table if you'd like. Click close and then we're scrolling a little bit here, but we can go ahead and move over. And now we can see all of these different parameters for a bunch of different competitors. So this is really helpful too. And then in terms of content, it gives you like the snippet. So if you're just like, okay, but what is their SEO? 
SEO title compared to my SEO title. That's what this tool shows you really simply in a beautiful table layout right here. Like this user experience of this tool is really great and like how they break it down in a way where you can just easily compare this stuff. And so you can compare your meta description with the other people's, your H1 heading. You can take a look at all of their H2 headings. And so the way that SE ranking breaks this down is really, really helpful. And so if I wanted to go ahead and update this blog post, this is the tool that I would use in order to help me kind of create a task list for me to go in to update it and make sure that I'm not missing anything when it comes to on-page optimization. So SE ranking is a paid tool, but they do have a free 14 day trial. And I will leave a link to that in the video description box below, or you can go to mariahmagazine.com slash SE ranking, and it should redirect you right over there. Just a heads up that that link is an affiliate link. So if you do end up up snagging one of the SE ranking packages or a paid plan, then I will make a small commission, but at no cost to you. And I'm literally only recommending SE ranking because I started playing around with our on-page SEO checker tool. And I love the way that it's laid out. And I like how they turn things into a checklist that doesn't feel as overwhelming as other SEO tools. So all in all, that was like the word vomit of like best practices from the front end of a blog post and a tool tool that you can use to kind of double check your work or take a look at things from more of a strategic perspective. So hopefully both of those aspects help and allow you to optimize pages on your website in a way that makes sense for the keyword, for search engines, and for your business. So that's it for today's video. If you guys found this video helpful, give me a really quick thumbs up. The simple thumbs up does go a long way in letting the YouTube algorithm know that my video is helpful and therefore hopefully pushing it out to more people that also might find it helpful. And like I mentioned in the video, if you want to give SE ranking a try, there's a link for a 14 day free trial. You can click on that link in the video description box below, or you can go to mariahmagazine.com slash SE ranking, and it should redirect you right over there. And if you have any questions about SE ranking specifically, or any questions about SEO in general, definitely leave me a comment below this video. I use your comments, your feedback, and your suggestions to inspire new videos on this channel. And if you're not already subscribed to the channel, what are you doing? Hit that subscribe button, turn on bell notifications, and I will see you in the next video. If you made it to the end of this video and you're just getting started with DIY SEO, but you want some help navigating the process, then definitely consider downloading my free roadmap to successful SEO. The free SEO guide dives into what SEO is, why it's important, and how search engines work, along with my six-step process to improving your SEO and your rankings. And then finally, I dive into the three tasks that you can start doing today to get the results that you want from Google. If you want to go ahead and snag this for yourself, then you can click the link in the video description box below, or you can head over to my website at mariahmagazine.com roadmap to download your own copy. Mm -hmm.